Welcome back. It's season two of Take Two. Two, 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 two. With Tiffany and Aaron. <laughs> do you do my intro now? I'm sorry. With Tiffany and me, Aaron. I cannot. The real Aaron. The real Aaron. Amen. Amen. So for season two, we are going to tweak it a little bit. Oh. Um, I think we're going to do every Monday. Okay. And we're going to make sure that we're more consistent. Amen. Yeah. Because Sundays don't really work because there's a lot going on and between the children and everything else. So I think we're going to change it to Mondays. Sounds good to me. Sounds like a plan. So it is... A. A. Ron's turn for topic, but before Ooh. we get to his topic <laughs> on the finale or the the episode before the finale for yes. season one, I said that season two, I think that we should tell a little bit more about ourselves oh, so yes, that yes. our listeners are more engaged with who we are and what, and what we're about and what we do. So, do you want to go first, babe, or you want me to go first? Um, why don't you go ahead and go first, and, you know, ladies first, me being the gentleman. Oh, you just want to see what I say so you can follow suit? Exactly. Okay, I knew. You need to stop. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, my name is Tiffany. Really? I'm really. And um, I'm the one who got us into this podcasting situation because I love doing all things... Uh, creative like this okay. so I said hey baby hey. I think I want to do podcasts mm-hmm. and me being the supportive boyfriend slash fiance slash husband I said he was down for the calls okay baby <laughs> hashtag power couple <laughs> power couple making money moves that should be our title for this podcast I love it so um so yes I am into all things social media. Um, speaking of which, side note, A.A. Ron just got on Instagram. Woo woo. So we've got him on pretty much all platforms except for Twitter. He's on Snapchat. He's on Facebook. He's on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's about all he can handle for right now. It's, so it's well, really a lot. Um, it, it's a lot for him. He's not a social media person at all. Yeah. Um. But you could have fooled me because when I'm not looking, he's putting something up or he's on looking at something. So he tries to put on this front like he doesn't know what he's doing he or what's stop. going on. But he so does. So don't let him fool you. I'm not the most techy person. But my personality is like I'll at least give it a shot. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like anything else in life. If you don't try... And another thing, he tries to make it seem like he's, like, such this introvert and this shy person. But he is an undercover, outgoing personality. So don't let him front like he's shy because he will talk to anybody. He's very good at, like, social media and, like, being entertaining. So you are. Like... The things he puts on, like, Snapchat and Instagram... Well, I can't really say Instagram because that's fresh. But, like, Snapchat... Like, it's funny. Like, it's good content. And he just thinks... I mean, that's just him being himself. So, that's probably why he's like, huh? Because he doesn't think it's anything special or out of the ordinary. Yeah, it's just... But that's him. But that is entertaining content. He just doesn't... He doesn't understand. Anyway, we'll get... We'll get back to that. This is about me right now. Oh, wow. Um... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh wow okay so i like all things um uh social media mm-hmm. i have a blog which was my first passion my first love yes i've been doing the blog since 2014 i think 13 oh. or 14 wow. um and i just share you know things in my personal world so Uh, things that I'm going through, situations, what I like, what I don't like, um, you know, recipes, DIY projects, um, when I travel, like I share everything. Mm -hmm. So 
that is my first love. And then I started YouTube. And so I do a lot of vlogging. I don't really do um, like, oh, let's sit down and show you how to braid hair. Like I, my stuff is all vlogging. So it's like daily, you know, not whatever out and about tutorials. Yeah. It's not tutorials or anything right. like that. So I might be like sitting down, just having a conversation or just, you know, um, so that is what I'm into. And after YouTube came the podcasting, um, and you know, I like doing like live streams on Periscope. Like I'm, I'm into all of that. Mm -hmm. I really want to grow like and now I can say our brand because oh, we're wow. kind of in this together. Mm, um, although I can't change like my hold the May on my, my um, blog because that's just, that stamps. Everybody knows what that is. You know, I can't really change it. Mm. But it kind of has a different meaning now. So before it was like hold the mail. It was like a play on my last name, like a play on words. Got it. But now it's like, oh, hold the mail because you're not going to be a male anymore. So mm, hold, hold the mail, you know. It. So I took it a whole nother way, but. Oh, how'd you take it, babe? More of a sexual kind of... Okay, he can describe that when he talks about himself, because I don't know what he's saying right now. Um, so... <laughs> don't play dumb. <laughs> so... So, anyway... So, anyway... Um, and so, outside of all of that... No. Um, I am a mother. Yeah. Um, and outside of being a mother and a fiance, um, I work at Kaiser... So I'm in the health field mm -hmm. um, and something that I love and very passionate about. I like helping people um, and I've always been that way since I was a little girl. Um, ever since I was little, I always said I was going to be a doctor and I went to college for biology pre-med and I was almost there and then a little 12-year-old slipped out of me. So, Ooh, huh? um, well, he wasn't 12 then, but my 12-year-old, you know, I had my child. It was a virgin birth. S yeah, so, huh? no, stop. <laughs> so, um, then I went back to school yes. to be a teacher, and so I did that for a little while. But now I'm back in the field where I originally wanted to be in. And, yeah, so when I'm not at work helping others mm -hmm. I am being a mom and when I'm not being a mom I'm being a fiance and when I'm not being a fiance I'm being a blogger and a podcaster so wow. that's me wrapped in one nutshell I like to be the life of the party I like to have a lot of fun Leo. Um, I am a Leo so <laughs> I'm very like attention seeking so that's a good way to put it yeah, so that's probably why I like all things social media and hmm, I wonder. vlogging and all the other stuff because I love the attention. Hmm. Um, but it's not like a, <laughs> oh, this bitch, like type an of... attention whore? Yeah, I'm not like an attention whore. It's always like good attention, you know? It's like positive, not like, you know... I think you try to take something you're passionate about and try to use it in a, a positive manner. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. I think so, too. So, yeah. So, um... You know, I have a very eclectic group of friends. Like, mm. I I can talk to anybody. I can make friends with anybody. And all my friends are very different. So, I'm just very, you know, outgoing. And um, I like to I like to have fun. I like to be around people that I love. Mm -hmm. um, I enjoy event planning. So, I like to plan big, extravagant things. Right. Um, so, yeah, that's just me in a nutshell. And who are you? Oh, wow. You know, it's really just hard to say. Um, I wish I could say that when God made me, he really broke the mold. <laughs> but uh, I'm not even sure of the casting process that took place uh, when I was made. Um, <clears throat> for those who don't know, uh, I go by many different names. Um, my name's Aaron. Let's start off there. <laughs> <laughs> um, Key and Peel with their skit, um, has now dubbed me A.A. Ron, which is crazy that the world over, even people just meeting me will say, oh, your name's Aaron. Oh, <laughs> like A.A. Ron. 
And I'm like, yeah, like a a Ron. They say it like it's some newfound thing. Like your name has always been spelled that way, a a Ron. It's always been that way. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's my name. Um. Most people just call me Ern, E R N. Um. The only <laughs> people to call me Aaron are probably my mother, oh, and Tiffany. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone else, I'm just Ern. There isn't really no nickname. Um. Your family in. <clears throat> started calling me rogue so if you hear someone call me or there's some type of rogue reference um now you know um that's about it but why do they call you rogue babe oh well okay so the long and short of that is that um i think they were kind of like i think they were kind of like making light of the fact that i had a couple of um clothing products from Rogue Fitness Mm -hmm. and I think they like it I feel like it was like every time they saw me he had on something that said like a Rogue t-shirt or Rogue hat he had Rogue apparel on and they were like oh this dude legitimately has nothing else in his closet but Rogue stuff Um, I I guess they thought I was sponsored by Rogue I don't know Um, you should be Rogue Rogue Fitness we will tag you in this. How does that work? Is Please that... sponsor my husband. I can't. I cannot. Well, Sp- he advertises Rogue Fitness like nobody's business. He has hats, shirts, uh, <laughs> gloves, uh, whatever you can think of. He has. So we're gonna have to post this on social media and um, Rogue Fitness. Sponsor, my man. In the rare event that someone from Rogue Fitness does listen to this, um, and to anyone listening, I'm totally into your products. Uh, They're American-made. At first, they can seem a tad pricey, but once you buy um, their equipment, um, I've worked with their bars, with their kettlebells, their plates, um, their bumpers. Uh, oh, my God. It's the quality that goes into it and the fact that it's made in... Uh, right here in America, uh, it's it's a, they're great products. Don't get me wrong. Um, and so what they stand for, I'm I'm legitimately behind. So I like the products, so I don't mind repping them. Um, so I don't I don't know like how many different sides to me there is. Um, uh, by day, I'm a uh, vehicle maintenance supervisor uh, at a local government uh, garage. Um, so I spend half of the day kind of like behind the computer, behind a telephone, ordering parts and doing repair orders and doing paperwork. And then the other half of my day, I work in a shop and I fix, fix buses, city buses, buses and tra- dump trucks, trucks and tractors and chainsaws and weed whackers and gators and all kinds of backhoes and skid steers and front end loaders and pickup trucks all kinds of a myriad of whatever they might have anyway so i do that um i'm a low-key uh hot rod enthusiast low-key metal fabricator low-key low-key he loves cars he wants to build one another one another one Mm -hmm. um so i've had a couple like you know i'm into like all things hot rod all things like you know, build in your garage on a budget type of dirt under your fingernails type of a guy. Um, He's a manly man. <laughs> um, and I don't know where it came. I mean, that's a long story where that came from. So I'll say that for another podcast. But anyway, um, I always did love woodworking. Um, I learned that in high school. No, middle school um, through a wood shop. I love the fact that they had that, and um, I would always make stuff out of, like, scrap lumber that I would find growing up, and then that turned into, like, the whole woodworking thing. Then when I got old enough, I was like, oh, you can make stuff out of metal and uh, not out of wood. So um, the art side of me kind of came out, and I learned how to, like, weld and, like, use a plasma cutter and use a cutting torch and, like, how to grind and shape things and heat things and, you know, make all kinds of stuff. Anyway, um that kind of transitioned into like my hot rod side where I would like make parts, um, and like do modifications to my own vehicles. And it's, it's been a heck of a ride. We'll go into that later. Um, 
there's a side of me that's artsy, so, you know, I'll randomly do, like, you know, some random, like, drawings, paintings, uh, like, I enjoy that kind of stuff, expressing myself through the arts. Mm -hmm. Um, can't sing to save my soul, can't dance to save my soul. Um, but he can play the guitar. I dabble in guitar playing. He can play the guitar. Don't let him downplay himself. And he can play it in more ways than one. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Um, um, so the only other side to me is like the big side that a lot of people see on social media and where this whole rogue fitness thing comes from. Hashtag rogue fitness. Hashtag. Ad. Ad. What, how do you say it? Ad. Advertisement. You're oh, ad yeah. Advertising. So I, I, I'm no rogue athlete by a long shot, but um, I do enjoy um, being motivational or um, like, you know, documenting this athletic side of myself. Um, I am an aspiring, hang with me here because this is going to be like sketchy how I spit this out. I'm an aspiring power lifter. Yeah. So, I don't, you know, to those out there who know what that is, that's one thing. Um, to those who don't, uh, it's it's merely a competition where you're judged in your, uh, how much you can squat, bench, press, and deadlift. Um, so, I'd love to get quasi-competitive in that, um, but due to restraints in time and family, um, that might be it's probably unlikely. But well, this is a different time and a different family. So Ooh, dag damn it, that's it. He is I'm going to make sure that he's able to do what he is passionate about and whatever dreams he has, I want him to be able to go after them. So how, how can you We are going to make sure that we make time and we make sacrifices. Ooh, okay. So that you can Chase your dreams. And that's... How do you not love uh, someone who stands behind you like that? You gotta you gotta love and admire a woman like that. She's a keeper. She's um, a keeper. She's a keeper. Um, so, yeah. So, there's that whole side of me. I'm, like, big into, you know, all things kind of, like, outdoors. And I'm big into, like, uh, trying to motivate people to get, like, their, their selves in better shape and... Motivating people to um, take their health seriously, um, you know, just improve the quality of life. And I think that's the bigger picture. I made a post. Uh, maybe we'll attach it. I don't know how that works. I made a post on Facebook um, where I think whether you're a bodybuilder, powerlifter, crossfitter, gym bro, one of those horrible, evil people who likes to run for miles and miles, like no matter what you're forte is in the fitness realm i think that just the bigger picture is that it provides such a greater quality of life when you're physically active so no matter how you you do that we just played uh tennis, tennis. today yes we did and that was kind of cool it was fun and i'm glad that i was able to see tiffany get physically active and have fun and we spent time together as a family so it was cool anyway um the the car side the fitness side the artsy side. And other than that, I think I'm just like a general goofball. Like, I'd like to have a good time and poke fun and, and try to drown the sorrows of my life in laughter. I think that's, <laughs> that's, that's a big part of who I am. Um, so that's me. Well, there you go. I like long walks on the beach and masturbating in the dark. So, babe, uh, did you have a topic <laughs> that you wanted to go over tonight? That didn't include masturbation or walks on the beach. Or if you could walk and masturbate. Do you think you could do that? I'm sure there's a possibility. Hmm. I wonder if you'd have to pause when you ejaculate. I can't, babe. What's That's the topic? Like, you know how you like pee? And then when you sneeze, it has to stop like the stream stops? I've never peed and sneezed at the same You've time. You've never pissed? I don't think so. And then sneezed at the same time? I don't think so. How old are you? 
I'm old enough. I don't recall ever that ever happening. Well, I'll literally do it for you one day. Okay. The stream stops. They say your heart stops when you sneeze. It so, does. Anyway, we are way off topic. We're way off topic. That's usually what happens with you. Go I ahead. can't. What's your... Uh... Here's my topic, right? All right, and we can't make it so long. We've, we've... We've, we've taken enough of your time. Let's make this short and sweet. Okay. Um, in a relationship, because this is supposed to be about relationships, mm-hmm. stay with me. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. How much do you change your appearance to please your partner? Mm. Mm. Well, here's the thing. Go ahead. I feel like... And this is... I just made this up. Tiffany didn't... It's like always. Tiffany didn't know what I was going to I don't know anything ask. about this. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, so here's my thing. Oh, boy. Why do you feel like there should be a change made when how you were is how your partner was attracted to you from the beginning? Oh, no. Oh, no, no, ma'am. I will not take that for an answer. Why? Um, it's not an answer. It's a question. I'm, I'm, I'm posing a question. Because when you met me, I always cuffed my pants. And you came to me and said... What was the? What did you say? If I see you with one more cuff in your pants, the wedding is off. <laughs> Isn't that what you told me? That is what I so said. So savage, babe. That is what I said. But what I'm saying is like, <laughs> okay, that's cuff. That's with your clothing. But I'm talking about like real appearance, like you know, like your real structure. You like, legitimately. I was attracted to you. I wasn't cuffs looking at all? your cuffs. <laughs> I didn't know until I got in so deep Ooh. that you cuffed your pants like that. Mm, yeah. Like from the beginning, if you I'd be like, mm, the way he dressed. You knew from the time you knew me in high school that I couldn't dress. If you, you remember that about fine me, fine in high school. I don't see how. Number two. Stop hitting your fist. It's, I'm it's, sorry. You know, it's, it's loud in the microphone. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I'm just something I'm. I always wanted to talk to you about. I'm so glad we did it live. What? But <laughs> so that's my thing. Like you, did you wear dresses before you met me? Because I remember you trying on a dress, and you were like, "Oh, I haven't put on a dress in so long." And I was like, "Babe, you look stunning in a dress." I was the one who said to you, "I was like, oh, imagine." Like, in the summertime, then you can, like, wear, like, your sundress. And you were like, oh, maybe I'll give this a go. Tried it. Loved it. I don't know. I mean, the weather changed, and then you went back to wearing more pants and your outfits. But Well, this is not... I don't know how to answer this, then. So because you for a... us, there have been multiple changes. Um, like, for you, I asked you if you could take, you know, shave your beard off. You did. I asked you if you could grow your hair out. You did. So, I mean, and, but it's it's not because I wanted you to change anything about you. just you. wanted to see me. I just wanted to see what it would look like. Oh, what would it look like with no beard, no mustache? Right. Oh, what would you look like if your hair was longer? But it's not because I was unhappy with the way you looked and I wanted you to change the way you looked. Sure, sure. I just wanted to know what that would look like. I got you. Make sense? It makes sense. Okay. Um, and I think that's a two-way street. I think you you first put on a couple dresses because I think you liked the way you looked in them and you liked the way I responded. Does that make sense? Yes, but I don't think it was because of how you responded, though. Oh, babe. Are I, you being honest right now? Yeah, I think I was wearing the dresses, one, because it was convenient like the convenience of just being able to throw in a dress and not really have to worry about okay what shirt am I going to wear with those pants or what am I like oh, being able oh, to throw oh, on oh, one okay. pe- one garment and it's summertime so it's like blazing hot and you can still you know have that draft up your dress and you know oh yes I can't 
And um, I found like a lot of cute dresses. So just to have that convenience of like not having to worry about a bunch of accessories and okay. Okay. matching okay. this and that. I mean, I, I and I wore some dresses because I knew of your reaction to those dresses in particular. Yes, God. But, but um, for the most part, it was really about comfortability and okay. convenience. So, would you change the way you look, or or how far are you willing to go to change your appearance? To, I mean, if it's not if it's not something drastic where you're trying to change me. Okay. Like if you were asking me to go get a breast reduction or get Ooh, a no, you babe. know butt implants or get my cheeks done or my nose done or something like that. That's like if too you're far. yeah, if you're trying to yeah. alter my physical appearance so that I don't look like the person that you met, right, then right, that's right. a problem because it's like you didn't like really like who you were or you did then right. but now you know what I mean? So like as long as you're not asking me to like physically alter mm. My appearance, because I would never ask you to physically alter your appearance to look like some imagination of what I think is the man of my dreams or whatever, you know? Would you ask me to get a penis reduction? Oh, no. I can't. (laughs) I set myself up for that one. Oh, no. Oh, no. Feels good. (laughs) No. (laughs) But, um... So, yeah, like, I wouldn't ask you to go and get under the knife to physically alter alter your appearance or how you look. Um, I agree. I think I'm willing to make some, like, the cuffs and the pants, dude, that's like, it's not even a big deal. So, to me, it was like, yeah, it's just something I'm, like, in the habit of doing. But I've been covering my pants since I was, like, 17 years old. So, Mm. it's not really a big deal. Somebody stopped you back then. You need to stop. Now, if I if you were like, oh, I want you to go get like the hair on your butt uh, to Ooh. fill in some of them bald spots on top of your head Ooh. and get the hair transplant, like I would have a little bit of a something to say about that. Like, man, that's how you really feel. You want me to go through all that? Um, uh, I don't know. So there's that. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, I think now I, I don't want to drag this out too long. Mm-mm. But I think there's a time and a place where you have to take care of how you look to please your your partner. Mm-hmm. I agree. And I think that is your intimate time together. Mm-hmm. Um, your partner may like the way you look in lingerie. Mm-hmm. And you might not have any interest towards it. But I think there are there is that time where you gotta kind of you know, yeah, you know, step out of that a little bit and go okay, well you know if this is gonna excite him or excite her, then no, uh, you know I'll put it on. Right. Or if you like the way I look in a, a suit coat or a blazer or something, and we go out on a date night, wouldn't you want me to throw one on, even though it might make me a tad bit uncomfortable, but it, it might look really kind of hot and kind of sensual to you. Mm. Might uh, get your fire going. Mm-hmm. Down in your nether regions. <laughs> anyway, that's all I'm saying. Like, I don't, you know... You guys talk about it at home with your, your partner. Like, how far is too far? I've known some people who, you know, uh, have have gone that far. Mm-hmm. You know, they've had boob jobs done. They've had liposuction done. They've had tummy tucks done. They've had... And not because they wanted it done. Like, their partner was like, no. Like... Why don't you go do this? Mm -hmm. And I think some people take it too far. And then I think other people, like, legitimately don't care about how they look. They're just like, man, you're just going to accept me from who I am. And I think, like, many things in life, Mm -hmm. I think the the answer is probably somewhere in the middle. Yep. Now, when it comes to bedroom sexy time. Oh, my God. Adult swim. Every episode takes it back to something in the bedroom i cannot i'm just saying that's the the true definition of when they say every 30 seconds a man is thinking about sex yes probably more frequently (laughs) anyway that's that was a good topic babe i'm glad you enjoyed it let's not um belabor 
Is that it? Belabor? What? Labor? Belabor? What are you trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> what is a belabor? When you extend something way past, when you extend the meeting time, or when you extend the conversation way past what it's due. Kind of like what we're doing now. It's you're, not belabor. You're belaboring this. Is that a word? Wow, I don't think so. Where's Siri at? <laughs> right. Um, anyway, we're going to go look at the dictionary because <laughs> he's making up words. But, um, yeah, that was a good topic. And Fantastic. we're And we're so happy to be back for season two. Amen. Um, we are currently trying to find or figure out a hashtag for our wedding. Um, so if anybody has any cool suggestions, Drop we've already gotten box. some, um, but we'd love more. So definitely put it in the comments. Um, let us know, um, something that incorporates my last name, which is Mayo and Aaron's last name, which is Jones. Um, so if you can think of something, that would be great. Um, wow. Or even incorporating, um, you know, hold the mayo, something with Jones or, mm-hmm. yeah. Now the world knows your first and last name and where you work. They don't know which one, babe. If you guys want my date of birth and social security <laughs> Feel free to write in, and I'll get you that information as soon as possible. <laughs> Credit card number, pin, whatever you need. I'm dead. All right. It's My dead. identity is legitimately stolen already, <laughs> and we haven't even posted this. <laughs> Your name is so common. There's so many. Please. All right. Um. So we're going to go. Say bye, babe. Let's go in the house and have some adult time. Say bye, babe. Hmm. Bye, babe.